Uh, recently I went to the junk store and I got these cables and I wanted to make sure they were okay. And so a simple thing to do is just hook them up to your uh, VNA and sweep them. Now that everybody has a DNA, that's, a, that's an interesting statement, you know. <laughs> a couple decades ago, if I said, oh yeah, everybody's got a DNA, uh, that would, people would lock me up and put me in the rubber room. Rubber room. Anyway, um, I got these two. Uh, they're a little bit different. One has a smaller diameter, one has a bigger diameter. I'm hoping they're all 50 ohms. They look 50 ohms. Um, I did, I did finally, finally find a, a writing. It's really, really, really fine writing on this. It's a Sooner cable. So my Swiss viewers will be very happy that I have a Switzerland uh, cable here. Um, this is a Eco, what is an Ecoflex? Oh, what, what do they call it? They have a really funny name for it. Uh, the, like I said, the writing's super, here you go. Super, super small on it. It is a Sooner... Envi Enviro Plex 316. So, uh, 316. Uh, it is a lossy cable. They say use it below six gigahertz, and it, it's still. I mean, it, all its little cables are lossy. And then this one has no markings at all on it, so this is kind of a mystery cable. So let's hook our uh, let's hook our fancy uh, fancy cable up to the VNA. And the first thing you'll notice is that the Smith chart goes round and round and round and round because you're adding electrical length. So you're just changing the phase information. It's just zipping around, zipping around, zipping around. Uh, so that's very normal. And then I'm going to put a 50 ohm load at the end of the cable. And if our transmission line is 50 ohms and our load is 50 ohms, we should get no reflection. And we get no reflection. We get a nice little dot in the middle there. Looks okay to me. So I'd say this cable is fine and it's 50 ohms. All right, so let's put on the fat cable and let's test that one out. So we'll screw this one on and it goes round and round and round and round and round, even more because it's longer. And we'll put the 50 ohm load on it. 50 ohm load I'm using is my little, uh, little one that I built. Look at that, even better, even better, even closer to 50 ohms. Um, sorry, Swiss, Switzerland. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's um, show you one other cable that I think you'll be interested in. Why else make a boring video? Uh, this cable here is a nice red one, and it has really expensive uh, connectors on it. I could tell just by the way they're the way they're manufactured, and it goes round and round and round and round. That's fine. And so this one should work really, really good because it really looks really, really expensive. So let's put the load on it. And whoops. Hmm. Hmm. So uh, this one, this one is really odd. Um, and I couldn't figure out what the heck it was doing. Um, and then I noticed something odd about this cable. And it will require some macro photography. So let me... Uh, Change lenses. I'm always changing lenses. All right, here's my cal, my cal stander that I built. Um, if you've been on my channel long enough, you'll know that uh, it's a little bit different than it was originally. Um, I ended up putting a PC board on both sides to make it more rigid. It finally did break on me, so I decided to uh, put up one of those little PC boards on both sides. But it's just a little, it's just a little homemade uh, device. It's got. Uh, uh, Nothing on here, and uh, the short, it's just solder. And then the uh, load is uh, 200 ohm resistors, uh, making a nice, nice accurate load. All right, this is what I want to show, show you and why I needed the lens. So this is this connector. It's a beautiful connector. Very, very nice. Very nice uh, heat shrinking. Let's look inside. And let me refocus the camera. Here we go. And you'll notice that it's a bit different. Let me uh, bring over these one of these Switzerland cables. And let me see if I can hold them both on camera in focus. There we go. What do you notice that's different? The internal... Ah, crap. These things are a little stiff. The internal diameter is different. So the external threads are fine. The pin size is fine. They screw into one another. And there's no other problem except for the one on the right here 
has a much smaller diameter. In fact, it's 2.92 millimeters. This one's, uh, I think, 3.5 millimeters. So why? There is, there is several, there's three different versions of SMAs that actually are compatible with one another. Quote, compatible. This one's rated at uh, 18 gigahertz. This one's rated at 40 gigahertz, 40, 40 gigahertz. Uh, so it has a much smaller, uh, much smaller transmission diameter, transmission line diameter. Um, so now I don't know about enough about RF theory to know that this is still 50 ohms and you get that funny Smith chart, or this is some really odd, uh, it's, I mean, I, you know, if you put a gun to my head, I'd say, well, this must be 120 ohms or something. It's like a, a different impedance. Um, but that doesn't make much sense to me. Uh, the world is 50 ohms, so I don't know. Uh, if anybody knows, let me know. I'm curious. Uh, I, I've stopped using this cable. I, I used it a couple times and I went, wait a minute, there's something funny about this cable. And uh, I have figured it out. I never had looked into the end. You, you look at the outside and you go, Oh, it's an SMA. I know how to use those. Um, the only other problem you'll run into, and uh, let me see if I can quickly find one of those. I only have one. I only have one sample of that. Where is it? Where is it? Hmm. Just a second, let me see if I can find it. So there's another strain, other than these th three different types of SMAs, the regular SMA, this uh, 2.92, and then there's a smaller, uh, a medium-sized one. There's a two, there's a 2.4 millimeter, but it's not compatible. It, it won't screw into it won't screw into these uh, SMAs. There's another size too, which I forget. Anyway, there's three different sizes, so you know, look in the end and make sure yours is the right size. The uh, the other thing that can get uh, that can trap you is uh, I bought some right angle adapters, and I thought, oh great, right angle adapters, fine. Um, you know, they're like you know, buck and a half from China or something like that, um, and everything looks fine except if you look in the end oops there's no pin you look in this end you go well that's not right it's the wrong sex so these are the opposite sex instead of this being male and this being female it's the other way around and so i don't know why people do that but <laughs> anyway there's those types too so uh, be careful be careful of uh, of that